Hey everybody, I'm Kate Dillon from Winning Motorsports Marketing. And of course we live in crazy times, we all know that. And I've just been receiving a lot of messages, a lot of phone calls where, where racers are asking me, okay, you know, hey, what do I do? Either I can't race, um, you know, how do I get sponsors if I can't race? Uh, what if my sponsors are telling me not to race at a certain racetrack? What can I do? How can I still, you know, have them as a sponsor? What can I do there? Um, we live in, uh, obviously, we have a lot of racial inequality in our world right now. And how do we, how do we navigate that plan? There's so much going on. But here's the interesting thing is that so much of this comes down to core values, um, core concepts, core ideas that just aren't going away ever. Um, if for, for as long as we have sponsorship moving forward, these, these probably will be kind of tried and true. Um, cause they're just kind of, uh, I'm just going to tell you a story. So <laughs> yeah, instead of just giving an answer, I'm going to tell a story. And that's kind of why I decided to come on today. And let me tell you what happened. So I'm on the phone yesterday and I have a brand new customer. This is somebody I've never dealt with before. And they, they call me and they want to place an order. So we get to the end of their order and they ask me, they say, well, um, hey, you know, if we end up ordering from you more in the future, I mean, do you, do you sponsor people? And well, this is clearly somebody who has, who has no idea who I am. I mean, other than they saw some cool race car parts online. And for anybody who's new here and doesn't know, I am the CEO of CrateInsider.com, where I sell race car parts to directly to racers. And then, of course, I have a lot of manufacturer relationships because of that. Um, but anyway, I, I told the person, I said, well, actually, interestingly enough, I, I actually teach racers about marketing and sponsorship. You know, you're welcome to check out some of my training or join my group. And, and then just because I was already on the phone with them, I, I just thought I'd ask the question. I said, so uh, what, actually, what exactly is it that you do for sponsors? Now, I want you to think about that question for just a moment. What exactly do you do for sponsors? And his answer to me was, well, um, it's actually my brother that's the racer and he started off in like motocross bikes and, and then he did that and then he had go-karts and, and then he had another car and he, had, he won a lot of races and then did this other kind of thing and now he races whatever it is that he races. So, it's, so I asked, my question was, what exactly do you do for sponsors? The answer I received was an entire biography of this race car driver. Do you see the disconnect here? And, and if, if you do, just feel free to uh, drop that in. I'm gonna just see if there's any comments, um, comment moderation, I don't even know what that means, but um, anyway, feel free to drop in comments. So I, I just rephrased it and I said, okay, now I, I understand, I mean, that's about your driver, but what exactly is it that you do for sponsors? I mean, do you, um, you know, do, do you do track events? Do you visit their business? Do you post on social media? Do you have a large audience? What exactly do you do for sponsors? And that was met with the equivalent of a blank stare when I was on the phone. And, and I've seen this many, many, many times before. You know, we talk about how uh, like, well, gosh, we're not racing as often, you know, and, and how's that going to help me get sponsors? Well, I, I'm going to tell you at the tried and true method of all of this is if you can answer the question, what is it that you can do for sponsors? And here's the thing is it really depends on the type of sponsor that you're going for or that you're currently working with. And it's not, there's not just one simple single answer at all to this. And what I mean by that is, how are you going to help that sponsor? What is it that that sponsor needs? So for instance, to give you a couple of examples, I sell race car parts. How exactly are you going to help me sell more race car parts? How are you going to do that? So does it matter if you race or you don't race? In that case, it probably does. I'm probably looking for more, or, you know, somebody in my part of the industry is looking for someone who's a good performer, somebody that other racers are gonna copy. But now let's compare this to for a second to maybe there's a local pizza place that's a mile away from the track. 
what is going to be important to them. They want more people sitting in their restaurant, eating pizza and spending money with them. Do you see how those are entirely different audiences? And they also play entirely differently to how you would be able to serve this sponsor. So, you know, in the, in my case, um, you know, in the racing case, yes, it actually makes a difference if you're going to race or not, unless, unless you're really good at social media and, and that's going to be key. And those are the type of things that I'm going to try that I try to teach is about social media and using it to maximize, you know, what I, I can be on that same side of the equation because I sell race car parts, right? You guys. So it matters to me as a business owner, whether we race or not, because if you guys aren't racing, you're not changing your oil. I can't sell oil. You know, maybe you build a car, but you have none of the maintenance that's involved with it. Clearly, I never want anybody to crash. I want people to improve their programs. But if you don't race at all, you have no need to improve. So that actually matters to me. So how do you overcome that? What is it that you can do to overcome and perhaps reach people in a different way? So maybe what I needed to do, and, and I can give you this example, I only ever come here with examples of things that I have tried or that I'm trying, I'm in the process of trying or I'm already doing, um, I'm gonna experiment with it first and find out what works and what doesn't. You know, when this coronavirus thing hit, and I know it's been months, but you know, who knows how long we're gonna be on, on lockdown. I'm, I'm here in lockdown, North Carolina. And you know, I, yeah, my business dropped like a rock. I mean, it just like literally fell through the floor. It was like we were in business one day and, and the next it's like we weren't. So my reaction to that was, okay, well, what, what can I do? I even felt weird selling for a little while there and I held back. But what I ended up doing was just accidentally, you know, just trying something new. The whole idea is I'm here to serve my audience is what I'm here to do. And so I started doing a live show with Steve Hendren from Hendren Racing Engines. And now we have a live show that we do every Sunday where we do a Q&A and, and answer tech questions on Sundays. The result of that is we have gained audience, we've gained more followers, and at the bottom line, we've sold more because, largely because of that live show. So, you know, where, where are the pieces that you could put together so that you can reach a larger audience for your potential sponsor. That's absolutely huge. So um, let's see, so Nigel's here. Nigel's here from Australia. My gosh, Nigel, it's like, well, I guess you're, you're up early, my goodness. Um, and, and Jeremiah, you know, hey, Kate, depends on the sponsor. If local, I approach it differently than a national one. I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, the, the local sponsor is much, much different than a, a national sponsor with different needs. You know, so for me, I don't, I don't really serve a local audience at all. I mean, Facebook would help me out with that a lot if I wanted to, you know, advertise just to like my local area, but I don't. I mean, I, I'm far and wide. Um, we have so many options when we have, when we go local, you know, and even look at, you know, who's somebody that needs your help right now, you know, that you could, uh, you can really help support them and support their audience. There's a lot of B2B stuff going on right now too, a lot of business to business. And if you can make those connections between a business that you know, you know, or two businesses that you know, maybe one you're already working with, maybe the other one you're not, maybe you can make introductions. There's a lot that can happen there. And then serving employees. So if you're in an area where, I mean, look at it. it there's been no sporting events at all this summer. You know, there's no kids soccer games. There's no kids baseball games. There's none of that. So you've got people who are just bored and racing is one of the few things depending on where you are clearly. But if you are at a, if you're in an area where your races can have fans in the stands, then something that could be a huge bonus to a business is, hey, I know that your employees, you know, you and your employees, you've been, you know, locked down, can't do fun things, you know, would, would love to provide you with the opportunity to be at a racetrack, you know, be this whole behind the scenes experience and sign autographs and, and do all of that where these people are going to feel special and they're going to actually have some fun because there's no fun out there. I mean, everything's stress and drama. At least when you go to a racetrack, it is pretty stress-free. I mean, obviously there's competition, 
but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. So the whole idea is how can you best serve? You know, another question I've been getting is like, well, hey, you know, with, with all this and depressed economy and blah, 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 is, you know, uh, the sponsors are pulling out because there's no money and all of that. I want to, I want to just have a conversation as a business owner. So as a business owner, anytime I can spend $10 and I can turn $10 into $20, I will then ask, okay, well, if 10 will turn into 20, can I give you 20 so I can get 40? Can I give 40 so I can get 80? So I can get 100 so I can get 200? If your sponsorship is truly an investment, which it should be, I mean, a, a sponsorship is advertising. So that return, different, again, it always depends on your particular sponsor. I mean, we just talked about the B2B example, that what is the win? I guess that's the big question here. What is is the win for a potential sponsor how how can you make this a winning situation how can you be part of that and what does that look like so maybe it's less on the business side maybe it's the keeping employees happy side you know there's there's just so much stress right now and those little things that a person that a business owner can do for their employees can make huge differences you know maybe at the end of this, maybe there's gonna be a lot of competition in the market and there's gonna be some employees that remember how their employer treated them. And something small like being able to go to a racetrack and having this team event and getting the kids out of the house, that could be a really big thing for them. So I, I just want you to think about that. What is the win? And if the win truly is, hey, I know I can help you make more sales. Well, why wouldn't a sponsor sign on for that? I mean, truthfully, but if it's, what I see so much is the, uh, I'm looking for marketing partners. Okay, what, what is that? What is a marketing partner? What, what do you mean? Basically, you want, you want to put my company logo sticker on your car. That's what a marketing partner means to me. Unless you can specifically talk to me about how you're going to benefit me. I mean, for instance, if your audience is bigger than mine on social media, yeah, probably makes a difference. If you got 12 followers on your Facebook page and I have 20,000, does what am I really going to benefit from that? So that's why building your audience is so important and just showing up and you know on one hand I'm a really good example on one side and I'm a terrible example on the other, but honestly my my main business I sell race car parts and that's where I'm going to double down on my effort and when you know, especially in the summertime. I mean, that is what I do on a daily basis. So building my personal brand and, and all of that is for me, it's a side project. It's important to me, but it's not going to take center stage. I was exhausted from all of the drama on all of the social media. I mean, I'm just going to call it drama. I am not trying to be like racist or anti-political or anything else. I, I watch this. I don't want to get in the middle of any contests or, you know, I, I just, I don't want to be in the middle of any of that. I don't do drama. It's not my gig. So I only want to bring positivity to anything, uh, but I I only have so much energy. And so I doubled down on my business. I just have too many accounts. So again, good example, bad example, but I can tell you that the, the number one way to get more followers and to get more fans and to build an audience is just to show up. It literally is to show up. But when we're talking about potential sponsors, we want to lead with the value that we have to offer them. What is something that we can do for them that they can't do for them, myself, themselves? And I, and I see Jeremiah Reed is here. He has a YouTube channel. And, and later, I'm going to post this video on YouTube. I'm, I'm live on Facebook right now for anybody who later watches on YouTube. And I will pop in Jeremiah's uh, YouTube channel. And the reason why is I'm, I'm saying that is because um, with, with Jeremiah in particular, I know that he, he's been uh, someone who's just gone out of his way to continue to make videos regardless if he was racing or not. And he's been a big asset for, um, he was part of a sponsorship competition and that he won and he's called out my company and gotten me, you know, I've, I've probably gotten new viewers and new followers because of Jeremiah's work. That's, that is doing something for me that I can't do for myself. I can, I can do a lot of this myself but for the people who already know Jeremiah, 
they're going to listen to him instead of just some, you know, random chick who's rambling about race car parts, right? So that's where he's going to benefit my company. And that's doing something I, I can't, I'm not a racer. So I'm not going to have the racer influence. That's going to make a big difference. Plus, as an end user customer, that makes a big difference as it, it's it's a really big big deal i talk a little bit about um user generated content in ugc and in different areas um let's see uh, joe says i believe it's reaching outside everyone's box and comfort zone to try new things majority of racers it seems um to be extremely hesitant to even want to try to do more for their sponsors than they already have and not seeing the big picture trying to spread their word but it's extremely tough i feel for you kate yeah um uh, you know we, we, we just have to be open to it. And, and the truth is, that's why I try stuff out before I ever present it to any of you guys. I, I do. I try it out for myself. I try it out for my race car parts business. If it applies, if it's more on the personal branding side, I try some stuff out myself and just try and just see, see, it's like spaghetti, throw it on the wall, see what's going to stick. But I can tell you now, here's, um, here's something really, really interesting is that another story that I'm going to tell is that my FedEx rep, okay, I, I ship a lot with FedEx. I mean, I spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars with FedEx because that's how I ship. They're my, they're my primary shipper. And you know, the, the thing is I let people know what I do. I, I do, you know, when somebody says, Oh, what kind of company do you have? You know, I tell them, you know, Hey, I sell race car parts and you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and so people know me as the girl who sells race car parts. It's, it's pretty well known. Any uh, companies I deal with that are, you know, outside of racing, that that's kind of a foreign concept. They still know who I am and what I do. So my rep called me earlier this week and he said, you know, are, are you a NASCAR fan? I was like, well, I mean, not really, but w why, what's going on? And he said, well, um, my former re roommate from college is, uh, works on the FedEx racing uh, program and there's going to be a Zoom call with Denny Hamlin, a Q&A session. And if you want to be a part of it, you can be part of it. And I was like, actually, that sounds really cool. You know, I just kind of want to hear. I want to see what, what are they doing on the NASCAR end? How are they handling this COVID thing? How are they handling it? They're doing a Zoom call with people who are interested, you know, whether it's employees. Normally, this racer would be going to different distribution centers and and different FedEx locations to do meet and greets with the employees. Well, since that's not possible, they've pivoted and now they're doing zoom calls so that people can be part of that and what was super cool is joe gibbs got on there and he um answered did some q a now i you guys know me you're here on winning motorsports marketing so you know what i do and i popped up because i had the opportunity there's only like 20 people on this call and i was able to raise my hand and said my my question was what advice would you give i work with racers what advice would you give for a racer who's just starting to look for sponsorship and and denny's answer was definitely far more like he thought i was a fedex employee i mean not that he was talking directly to me but i mean he was but it was more of like a group thing and and talking about um you know really serving that sponsor but what was interesting is when joe gibbs came on he he went a whole nother level and I even, uh, I'm gonna have to do an entirely a whole different video on that just to really boil it down. But what he said is that, you know, the racing has changed a lot and 15 years ago, it meant showing up at the racetrack and doing the meet and greets, but that's, that's really back burner. Now, the most important thing right now for sponsorship and for serving sponsors for one, it's B2B is a lot in the NASCAR world anyway. Uh, but then secondly, it's all social and digital, social and digital. Those are the two words, social and digital. And I heard that straight from Coach Joe Gibbs today on a Zoom call, on a, a FedEx sponsored Zoom call. So, you know, I, it's not that about, oh, look, I'm right. You know, I'm not trying to say that. All I'm saying is, is it, let's just take in the lessons. Let's learn what we can. You know, and find the sweet spot. Maybe you don't want to be on every single platform. I don't always love being on every single platform. I try them all out, see what's going to work, see what I like, see what I don't like. I mean, I, I t talk to people about Instagram. Honestly, Instagram used to be one of my favorites. It's not really one of my favorites anymore. I I kind of like YouTube is kind of my sweet spot right now. I'm, I'm loving, I love YouTube. I love the power of connecting through video. 
And that happens to be my favorite platform of all of them at this moment in time. Uh, but, you know, that could change next month. <laughs> so who knows? And I'm resisting TikTok. I'm still resisting that one. But um, let me see. It looks like I've got some other um, co comments here. So Nigel, uh, he says, as a sponsor, if you do more for me, I will do more as a sponsor for you. Simple. Absolutely. You know, this is this can be a relationship that can be like a like that bad girlfriend situation where it's like this, you know, constant spiral to the bottom. Or, you know, what I found is the more you do for others, the more they want to do for you. And it's, it's interesting, my sign this week, I say thank you. Um, honestly, my superpower is gratitude. I feel it in my heart. I mean, I'm grateful for what I can do every single day. I'm grateful when a manufacturer sends me t-shirts to give away on my show and I make sure I know that. I mean, like it's, if you can be grateful for the small things, it really makes a difference when you get to the big things. Oh my God, I'm gonna tell you a gratitude story. Oh, wow, I about came unglued the other day. And so I know you guys love it when I rant and this will be one of those. So I had gotten an email a couple of weeks ago and a person was asking me for a hat. And now normally I'd say, you know, it just depends. I mean, if they, if they came out and said, hey, I watch your show, I love what you do, you know, and it, if they said something like that, yeah, you know, it, it would be a no brainer. This was just somebody probably just asking for something for free. I just felt like a nice person. I said, okay, what's your address? So, so this is a person, just want to clarify, this is a person who's not a customer, who I don't know if they watch my shows or not. I don't know if they watch my videos. I don't know how they found out about me. I don't know anything about that. All I know is I got an email asking for a free hat. So I decide, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and send this person a hat. So, you know, you got the cost of the hat. You, know, you got the cost of the postage. This, this isn't about money, but it, we're going to talk about return here. So do you know that, so this is either on Monday or Tuesday, I think it was on Monday, and I'm sitting here at my desk, and on Mondays, I'm going to tell you, like, my phone blows up. I am on call after call. I'm, I'm calling back people who called while I was on another call. I mean, this is, it's insanity is what a Monday is. So I, I, then I'm trying to catch up with emails. I got text messages coming in. I mean, it is nothing but communication the entire day. And so this, then my phone rings and I answer the phone and this guy says, hey, um, you know, I, I got a, I had you send me a hat and I'm wondering why you sent me a used hat. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't send you a used hat. You know, what's your name? And I said, oh, well, it's because it's a distressed style. It's that way on purpose. They're, because he's like, yeah, it's like kind of frayed and on the on the edge and and it has these scratches on it. It's like they're all like that. I did not send you a used hat. I mean, if if you don't like it, send it back. I don't care. I mean, but I didn't send you a used hat. That's if you could look on our website, you'll see that that's the hat we sell. Then I get off the phone with him. I go to check my email, and do you know he's already he's also sent me an email telling me that I sent him a used hat. And, and I'm like, dude, just send it back at this point. Just send it back. If you don't like it, send it back. I mean, unbelievable. You try to do something nice for somebody and this is the treatment you get in return. And I'm gonna see if I, I don't think I have any Trade Insider hats up here, but I think you guys all know the style I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't have a, a hat sitting there. So I sent him a link and I, on the email when I returned it and I sent him an, a link and I said, yeah, here's the hat. You know, here's a link to the hat. They all look like this, you know, but how ungrateful can you possibly be to complain about the thing that you got for free? But here's the truth of the matter is while it's maybe different in, you know, this is a really blatant example that literally did happen, but it, it also happens every day with sponsorship when, you know, when you you're not serving, you're not giving them what they really wanted. And in this case, this guy clearly thought I was going to send out, I don't know, probably a flat brim hat with a sticker on it, but I don't have those kind of hats. So I, I don't know what he wanted. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> that's my, um, my lack of gratitude story for the day. All right. So this next one, how do you set packages pricing to present to sponsors? Do you feel it depends on size of company or do you look more at race car cost? Actually, I don't give a shit how much your car costs zero. Here's my question. What can you do for me? 
I mean, not me specifically, but you know, in the sponsor world. So what value are you going to bring? If you have 10 Facebook followers on your Facebook page or you have no Facebook page at all, I mean, here's what I run into. I, I see a lot of racers that have no Facebook page, no website, no Instagram pet presence, and they, like, they just have their personal Facebook. Okay, tell me how you're going to sell more parts for me as if I'm your sponsor, how are you gonna do that? What kind of an audience do you have? You, you have friends and family. That's great, but you know, if you have fans, how big is your fan base? And what is that worth? And there's different levels of worth depending on how big your viewership is. So if you have no digital assets, it's, it's pretty difficult, you know, unless you do some stuff in your local community, you know, like, hey, I'll bring the race car to a pizza place and, you know, you can advertise it and, you know, it's a special added benefit and I'll sign autographs. That could be a benefit. Um, that's just an example of something local, whether it's a hardware store or a, or a restaurant. I use restaurants a lot just because, you know, I, I love food. Um, <laughs> but, you know, whether maybe it's a garden center that's having a special and, hey, look, we're going to have uh, a race car driver that's adding value at your local community level but if you really really want to get more broad based you have to build an audience you, you you have to i mean otherwise it's a tree if a tree follows in the middle of the woods and nobody's there to hear it does it make a sound does it matter i mean i think the answer to that question is does does it even matter yeah so our pricing is going to be based on how much business what kind of an roi we're going to look at an roi return on investment of two to ten times of the value that you're going to provide. So let's say you're gonna ask for $500. Well, you better be able to bring in sales that are 1,000 to $5,000, you know, two to 10 times that return. So if you think that you've got a big enough audience that if somebody gives you $50,000 that you would be able to get them $25,000 worth of sales, then good, go for it. But if you have no one to sell to, if you have no one to, to expose them to, it's really hard to make that case. It, it really is. And so these numbers climb as you gain an audience. And that's why putting the work in and showing up on social media can be really, really important. And if you were to tell me that, hey, um, I have a targeted email list of people who live in Rutherford County that all like um, going to football games on Friday night and I could advertise your restaurant having a special for Friday nights um, because I've got this big list, that, that could have some value there. And, and then a really good way to, for you to find out how much your value is, is uh, affiliate marketing, which is a whole nother deal um, that I could definitely talk about. So no, it doesn't matter how much your race car costs. It doesn't matter if, whether it's a Pinewood Derby car that you're carving out of a piece of wood for a Boy Scout troop, or if you've got a NASCAR car, the big thing is, is how much value are you providing? That's, that's the really, really big question. Uh, let's see, uh, and David's like, can't hear, wait to hear that follow-up video. I don't know which one you mean, <laughs> the follow-up video. I, mean, I have a lot of videos I really need to be shooting. I just kind of had my head down and uh, uh, I, I have to say that the strategies we've used this year to increase our influence and increase our our market share and improve sales. I I was so far behind you guys. I mean, when March hit, I was so far behind, really, really far behind. And honestly, I was a bit scared. You know, I knew that I could struggle through because you know what? I, I know I can, I can live on ramen noodles. I'm okay with that. I will fight and I will work hard. I will work, I'll outwork about anybody. But what I can say is now at this point, because of the hard work we put in is, it's translated into we're right on par with where we were last year and made up that difference and and plus we're a little bit ahead at least for now i mean you know, i never know what's going to happen but yeah that's uh and here's the thing actually here's something i learned in sales a long time ago is that the work you do today will have the biggest effect 30 60 90 days down the road so yeah we started doing this live video show back in march and it's built up a following and we'll have 30, 50, 80 people live on a call with us or on a Facebook live with us on a Sunday afternoon. Now it might be started with 12 people, but because we were consistent and we kept on showing up and we provided value to the audience, 
you know, maybe I'm, maybe this is valuable to you. Maybe you think I'm rambling, but you know, the idea is to really provide value. And if we're providing value, it keeps people showing up week after week. And, and also then we get this connection as well, which is so vital and so important because, you know, it's, it's one thing to, uh, a lot of times we make racing about the cars, but racing truly, I mean, yes, it's about the cars when you're at the track and all that, but outside of that track experience, it's a lot of this is about people connection. I mean, I sell parts. I was going to see if I had one sitting on here. I mean, you know, you can buy all-star parts at a hundred different race car shops around the country or more. Well, why would you buy from me? Well, why you would buy from me is because, wow, she shows up, she answers questions. Um, you know, I, I feel like I know her. That That's the kind of responses I get from people. They feel connected. I mean, even that call today that I told you guys about that had Denny Hamlin and, and on the Zoom call with Joe Gibbs. Well, I mean, I'd heard Denny Hamlin's name before, but I, I'm not really a big NASCAR fan. But now, you know, wow, he showed up personally. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like, wow, I, I could be a Denny Hamlin fan because now I know something more about this particular person. Hang on just a second. I'm going to turn this other camera on here. One thing about cameras is that, there we go. Um, one thing about cameras is they turn themselves off and it's, it's really, really annoying. Um, let's see. Oh, the Joe Gibbs story. Yes. Um, so David, um, the follow up on that, I'm just going to have to do a whole separate video on that because that was just so incredibly valuable to hear Joe Gibbs uh, talk about that. It, it really was. So I'll, I, I want to do something a little more in depth on, on that uh, whole deal and really take that in. But um, I think that's pretty much all I had for you today, guys. I, I want to just emphasize that we can sit here and use this virus or the political situation. We can use anything as an excuse at any time. There are always excuses hiding under every single rock. But if we're willing to educate ourselves, if we're, we're willing to show up, if we're willing to do the work, then, then we can be successful. That's a, it's a huge thing. And I see Joe's got a comment here. He says, I definitely feel connected. Honestly, just for my business, you make me feel more confident. I can make it through this. I've missed your frequency. Well, thank you, Joe. Yes, I'm a slacker and I need to show up more often. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I got beat down. I'll, I'll own it. I'll own it. And I just felt overwhelmed. But, you know, now I did start another business too. So there's that. Um, that happens. Hey, you know what I started? I started an Airbnb uh, <laughs> property and it opened like March something. Yeah, March, what was it? March 15th, right before the shutdown. Yeah, so I started a new business and it's absolutely been profitable. So there's that. <laughs> so. I don't know who else does things like I do. I don't know. I didn't, obviously I didn't plan it. This was in the works long before there was a pandemic, but yep, that, that happened. Um, I, I just want to show you guys, give you a little bit of motivation to show you, you know what? It is possible. This stuff exists. And if nothing else, businesses need your help. A lot of these businesses need your help more than they've ever needed you before. You know, if they tell you, Hey, you know what? We're having a really hard time with this, with, with the pandemic, with, with whatever, what, how can you come in as a hero and do something for them? You know, we've had sponsors forever do, do, do for us without getting anything in return. You know, my phone is blowing up right now. You guys, there could be a huge opportunity right now. I'm a huge opportunity in that PRI is on the fence whether it's going to happen or not. I think it can. I'm hoping it can. That's a game changer for me if it doesn't. But I, my phone was blowing up last week and people are asking me, manufacturers are asking me, hey, Kate, if PRI doesn't happen, what's your plan B? What are you going to do? You know, it, it, because they know that I shoot video and they know the video helps them. So what is my plan B? And I was like, hey, man, I'm just in the believer mode. And until I know one way or the other, I'm not really going down that path. But what I'm showing you here is that if you can do more for them, you know, or that's what a partnership is about. Um, talked to another one and I, and I said, Hey, you know what, if you're having a hard time, reach out to your sponsored drivers, ask them to make a video because th it, that has a lot of value for you. And video, you guys, video is the answer to everything sponsorship 
at all. I mean, anything about marketing, video is the answer. Video is the core. Video is the highest performing. I have tried all of the things and video is the best. But when you can partner up and have a partnership situation, you're doing something for them that they can't do for themselves. That's huge. And the truth is, even if they brought in a camera crew to shoot videos about their products, there's always going to be a bias. You know, if I tell you about the product I'm selling, there's always going to be a filter to, yeah, she wants to sell me something. But it's a whole different deal when it's coming from a racer. Hey, you know what? I could choose, you know, I could choose any grease on the market. This is the grease that I choose. That actually has an impact. And people watch reviews. People are buying stuff right now. I mean, I was just looking at reviews for things on YouTube last night. I, uh, a product that I don't know anything about. So I'm going to go start looking at reviews and, and what videos pop up, not race car parts, something totally different, but, but still, you know, that if that's what people can find, it's going to be make big, a big difference. So anyway, I hope that is super helpful for you guys. And um, you know, I do, I will be jumping on a little bit more often. We've got a lot of brand new people in our Winnie Motorsports Marketing Facebook group. I am here to serve. I do have a program that will be wrapping up in the next couple months. And then I'm looking at doing something new going into 2021. I, I want to, I'm still working on what is the absolute best way to get you guys this information and to get you the results that you're looking for and get you on that path in the, in the shortest amount of time, the least amount of effort, and make it as impactful as possible. So I'm still working through that. But I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being part of Winning Motorsports Marketing. And I will look forward to seeing you guys real soon. Feel free to drop in any questions.